All right, so I recently picked up a pair of Brooks running sneakers, not something I normally buy. I've had a couple pairs here and there, but this one uh, caught my eye because it uh, featured something in this um, midsole that looked just different and, and it really was eye-catching. So this is the shoe right here. It's called the Brooks BL Aurora, uh, but this has a really, really wild looking midsole. As you can see, it literally looks like pillow clouds. And of course you guys know, uh, I'm always chasing that comfy, comfy feel uh, so definitely uh, when I saw the pillow clouds in this, and it says it's nitrogen injected, I was like, I, I got to try these out and give them a go. They were kind of expensive at $200, uh, and my experience so far is they do fit true to size for those wondering. But let's go ahead and get into a review of these guys from a casual perspective. What is going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys haven't used my website yet, basically I just post a bunch of sneaker deals out there for you guys, anything new, anything on sale, I usually find out there. And if you guys ever find your own stuff out there that is for sale, hit me up on Twitter and let me know and I'll uh, tag you when, uh, when I repost it. So first things first, we'll start off with the box here. It is a Brooks running box, but it does say BL Blue Line. It says limit pushing technology, limited edition quantity, a uh, Project Aurora BLX17. 14007, 007. I like that they have a picture of the shoe right here, which is always nice to have a, a reference uh, on the box. And men's at 9.5, but it also says happy landing, explore more scan here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and scan this little code thing. And all you do, for those that don't know, pull up your camera, hold it up to it, and then it will pop up a Safari link if you have um, a uh, an iPhone. And then it gives me some information about this uh, sneaker and this technology. So uh, this is actually kind of cool. I did not know what they were gonna have here. So it says super soft shoe with an out of this world look. Experience the supreme cushioning of the Aurora BL from the Brooks Blue Line Lab. The lab just announced the first ever nitrogen injected DNA Loft V3, an insanely soft yet durable ride inside and outside of the atmosphere. Limit pushing technology, limited edition quantities, happy landing. So the Blue Line Lab is like there, it must be their like innovation kitchen from like Nike. Uh, but um, yeah, it says it's nitrogen infused technology and ready for landing. It says flash forward from Hyperion Tempo to Aurora BL. The new Aurora BL gets its nitrogen infused roots from its Blue Line Lab cousin, the Hyperion Tempo. This shoe has paved the way uh, for our revolutionary cushioning process. We infuse the Hyperion Tempo's DNA flash cushion with nitrogen to deliver a fast, super lightweight ride with incredible energy return. We first used nitrogen infusion when we created the DNA flash for the Hyperion Tempo. The shoe helped runners uh, train hard so they can run faster on race day. Uh, nitrogen infusion is a process known from the outside of running industry, like coffee, for example, allows us to hone in on the energy return of our foam compound and dial it up while always making it lighter. Nitrogen infusion now allows us to create distinct cushioning compounds that provide unique experiences depending on the type of run or results a runner is looking for. So actually I did a review on the Hyperion Tempo last year and it was a really nice shoe. The cushioning on that was really, really good. Uh, best I've seen from Brooks uh, up to this point and it was actually kind of a, a smaller cushioning but it was actually really good and those shoes were insanely light. Uh, so now we have these, let's go ahead and weigh these and see what these are at. Uh, this is 9.1 ounces. So not the lightest, the Hyperion Tempo is obviously much lighter but look, at the reason why, because of this midsole is just absolutely massive. I do like that they mentioned the decoupled midsole. It is an interesting look. I don't know if it really matters that you can twist the shoe back and forth. So first of all, the design of this shoe, I think is just super dope looking. Uh, the overall look of this shoe is exaggerated to the best of its abilities, obviously with this crazy uh, heel of the shoe. The, the midsole is absolutely glorious. And then you have the upper, which has like a very breathable like wire mesh or I don't know what the official term is of this. Every company has a different name, but we've seen the same stuff with Adidas and the same stuff with Nike. Uh, it comes on a lot of the premium products. There are a couple underlays right here. You can see one, uh, it's like a double underlay over the toe box and then a little bit more as you come around. Oddly enough, you have the Brooks logo printed on the sides in black right here and it says Brooks on it. But my pair is actually flawed a little bit because where it says Brooks, it's like bunched up. So it's like a, like an iron-on almost that just didn't get on uh, correctly on the right shoe. So kind of uh, interesting there. You do have like five dots down here on the front. Kind of reminds me of the Alpha Project days, which of course I love. And then, oh, if you don't know, that's a Nike thing. But uh, the laces are interesting. They're very soft laces. Uh, different than I've seen in other pairs of sneakers, but definitely very, very soft. And uh, I like the coloring of this shoe as well. 
the whites, the grays, the black and orange. It just looks good together. So as you work your way back to the back of the shoe, you can notice that the tongue is definitely different than what we've seen in the past. It's almost like an underwear liner. You have like a stretchy underwear liner, like a, right here, or a sports bra or something like that. Not that I've worn one of those, but anyway, it's really soft on the inside. So you can actually slide your foot in here and wear them with no socks on. And it actually felt pretty cool, but I wouldn't want to wear these without socks though, because of the clear material on the toe box, which it's kind of a, a bummer. Like I don't like to be able to see my toes sometimes on sneakers, especially like running sneakers. You definitely have to wear socks with these. Interesting tongue design. I'm kind of like, nah, I like it, but I don't like it at the same time. Uh, anyway, you guys can be the judge when you try them out because it, it's something that you could really like or really not like. So, uh, but it's different. It's not traditional by any means. Uh, I do like the orange color and then also the little squares for the material on that is, is comfortable. But then you work your way back to the heel cup and then you have this reflective heel cup and it kind of goes at an angle right here and connects on. And I like the fact that it does that. It kind of makes it look pretty cool how it's like different than the front section of the shoe. And then you have these little bumps on the back, almost like easy two vibes right here with the three little bumps in the back. And it does have like a, a soft piping around it, which is another nice little addition. The padding on the inside of the shoe is very, very minimal, but honestly, it's it's not uncomfortable. It's comfortable. It just doesn't have a lot of uh, materials here, uh, giving you that extra like cushion on the tongue and, and the uh, heel of the shoe. But the part that really matters is this midsole. This is the only thing that they've talked about. DNA Loft V3. So one thing that I do love is that they are constantly evolving the technology like the dna um from back in the day from brooks was terrible like it was the hardest like stuff i've ever felt it was supposed to be very responsive but it wasn't soft and squishy and it's almost like you have to have two or three different types of cushioning technologies out there nowadays you want something that's very responsive you want something that's very well cushioned and then sometimes you want something that's very well cushioned and responsive and i feel like that's what you're probably getting with this uh, from a running perspective the the midsoles is just gnarly big and if you look it up really close it kind of reminds you of like that sketchers running shoe that i had from back in the day where it's like a very cellular look to it and uh it's almost kind of see-through-ish as well but very cellular and like big and and squishy and it just it feels really really good uh, on feet and in hand just squishing it is is a fun uh, thing to do the outsole traction is really cool too very minimal but i love the the placement of the traction uh, patterns it just looks cool and it's uh, just a really nice design i like also that they went with the orange on the back and then the gray on the front again just kind of bringing in that whole um theme the biggest flaw in my opinion on the shoe is there's a little line that comes in that's like sunken in on the back of the heel kind of makes it look like a hoof back here the problem though is that if you're trying to uh heel strike heel toe transition and of course it's if you're doing it like in an exaggerated motion if you're walking somewhat normal you don't notice it too much but leave a comment if you guys I did notice this and I'm not the only one that has actually found this, but right here, there's a little air pocket that gets trapped. So when you transition in heel to toe, it's like a little bubble and it goes pop and like it, it just traps air right here and it's like a little suction cup. Uh, and actually the only other shoe that I've had that problem with was the uh, Nike Vaporfly 4%. Those also had that little problem where there was a little suction cup issue on the bottom of the shoe, but I noticed it right here when I was stepping. Now I was stepping extremely like heel to toe and of course it gets stuck right right around there, but um, but it was something to note and I wanted to let you guys know it. It honestly didn't affect my walking around or anything like that, but from a time to time, I noticed a, a weight shift here and there and be go pop, and uh, that was kind of like, oh man, I wish they didn't, uh, they didn't have that. But regardless, that's probably the only thing that I could say uh, somewhat negative about the shoe other than the tongue if you don't like the the placement of the tongue those are the two uh, cons i guess if you will again if i had a nitpick the third one would be the uh the toe box area just the clear material not having an overlay over top of it and having exposed material for your toes and then being able to see your toes down this isn't a shoe you're not gonna have the option to be able to wear these without socks and most of the people that probably design these are like you're an idiot why would you wear these without socks well uh, sometimes you just throw them on and you, you wear them around and, and um, you don't wear socks on them. Sometimes you do, but it does limit it a little bit because of that. Also, the socks that you'd wear with these um, can get bunched a little bit uh, because of this tongue and the little underwear band that has going on there. But um, but it's comfortable and it is definitely well cushioned. I did want to do a little bit of a test uh, with the, the, the durometer here and see... Uh, what we're looking at here because this thing is super soft. It's looking about a 32 uh, for the density and then also the just for comparison the the rubber is like a 59 or something like that. So 32, 28, 32 in between there. It feels really soft um, in hand though. Not the softest on the market but very very soft 
and competitive with all of the other uh, light foam cushionings out there. 9.1 ounces and very soft, uh, very breathable, and uh, supposedly the durability is there as well. Uh, it's a cool looking shoe, and if you want something different for your feet, this was one of those shoes that I was really excited to get and try on. If it was terrible, I would honestly be returning them because they cost me $200, but they're not terrible, and it's something that I want to be able to uh, continue to wear and just uh, give them a go. And if I start running, which I actually plan on doing, I'm here pretty soon just trying to learn how to run, which I'm I'm terrible at. But now that I'm doing YouTube full time, like I'm going to have more time to actually work out, which is like a heaven sent. I'm I honestly super stoked about that. But so I'm going to start running and I'll be able to have some really nice options to run in like these and all the other crazy running shoes that I've got. What do you guys think about the Brooks BL or the Aurora BL? Uh, I think it's a cool looking shoe. If you guys want to buy a pair of them, check the link in the description. Hopefully they'll still be available in select sizes. But uh, yeah, it's a cool pair of sneakers and shout out to anybody that actually recommended these sneakers to me I saw a couple tags on Instagram, maybe even one on on uh, Twitter But mostly on Instagram everybody tagging me saying these are the ones uh, drew at wear testers actually had a pair and somebody tagged me in one of uh, his posts I think uh, so uh, yeah, they did a review on these from a per running perspective for those that want to know that But anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully we'll see you guys back here for some more content uh, Yeah, be well. Peace guys